My name is Colin Anderson. And my name is Ken Shishino. And this is the Husky engine. So right off the bat, our team dynamics, um, the engine we created and assembled and dimensioned and everything from the scratch. Um, it came out perfectly, uh, fit together uh, great, all the dimensions were right, all the constraints were right. Um, however, our um, as far as meeting and getting this done uh, was a little turbulent. Uh, throughout the entire process. Um, both Ken and my schedules didn't sync up ideally. Um, there was no really set organized, or there's no organized uh, meeting plan, and uh, we did kind of suffer from that. Uh, and it, we, there were no meetings held outside of class uh, except for uh, within the last week of the project. So because of that, uh, we did suffer in that regard. Um, however, we did put out a good product. So Right here is our full assembly of the Husky steam engine. Um, as you can see, uh, there's three main sub-assemblies with, uh, with a couple miscellaneous parts that really didn't fit into a good category of, uh, of any sub-assembly, really. So here are the sub-assemblies. So right here you can see, as I said before, uh, this is the exploded view of the entire engine. Uh, the three main sub-assemblies, they have the base plate sub-assembly, the flywheel sub-assembly, and the top cylinder sub-assembly with those miscellaneous parts in between the uh, cylinder plate and the top cylinder sub-assembly. So the base plate sub-assembly is comprised mostly of uh, three parts. You have uh, you have the 10 M4 by 12 Phillips head screws, which are mounted in from the bottom through uh, all of the holes, uh, and then the six pillars that are then mounted on the six screws on the left side of the base plate. Uh, the base plate subassembly really establishes a firm mounting point that is relied upon uh, by the other components. Uh, so really it starts off with the base plate. Uh, this part was relatively easy to, uh, to make. All it required was a simple uh, rectangle that was just uh, padded, as well as just putting in some holes in a rectangular in rectangular patterns. Um, really, no complexity to this one uh, in that regard. Uh, Ken, did you want to explain the pillar? Um, the pillar is also was a pretty simple part. Uh, it's basically a a tube with two holes on the end, about 11.5 millimeters deep, and it has threaded lines for the screws to go in uh, to attach it with the the base plate. So those two, those two pieces were really the main pieces of the base plate subassembly. Uh, the screws were then imported from Katia database. And to uh, add on to that, um, the, the screw holes on the base plate were a uh, countersink, which was later on found to be a little bit more complicated to do on the drawings. So next up is the flywheel subassembly. Um, the flywheel subassembly consists of four major parts, the flywheel in the red, the crankshaft, the two bearing plates holding the crankshaft, and the, the cam that moves the valve rod. It also includes a washer and a screw that holds the crankshaft and the piston rod together. The purpose of the subassembly is just to store rotational energy during the engine cycle. So we'll break it down to each part, and then the flywheel was made, was made by uh, Colin. So the flywheel, uh, relatively simple. Uh, what I just did is I took a uh, about a quarter of the circle, or of the circle in the section view, uh, made that and then revolved it around itself so that way it could uh, make the, what you see here. Uh, then I drilled a hole through the center and uh, that is pretty much what the flywheel was in the little hole on the side. So very easy part to, uh, to make in Katia. This is the cam. Um, it, as you can see there's an angle to the top surface of the cam uh, about 65 degrees from the center line that goes um, vertically. Uh, it's not a complicated part, except to make the hole on the curved surface inside the cylinder was a little bit challenging for me, but uh, uh, as you can see, it worked very well. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, I also made the crankshaft. Uh, this is basically um, three different sized cylinders put together with a hole through the middle of the, the round uh, circle on the, the end of the shaft. And the, also there's a knob with a hole as well for these screws that uh, connects it to the, the valve rod. Yes. The bearing plate uh, was a very interesting part uh, personally because I found it was actually two parts combined in one. Um, you have the main plate itself and then inside that hole you have another uh, little little bearing. 
um, that also required this. So this required, um, to, you know, for me to design both in uh, assembly design and in part design uh, in order to make that. Um, there's, you know, making two of them was no problem because you just import it twice. Um, but really also one of the main challenges was actually drilling that hole through the center to make sure, or through that, that hole through the top uh, to make sure that it would go through both uh, pieces. So this part was was not really complex, but really more drawn out than it should than it needed to be. So our third subassembly is the top cylinder subassembly. During the process of the engine, the steam will build up pressure inside the main cylinder and release through the, the valve chamber sticking out from the front. And the, the cylinder, as you can see, is closed tightly by the cylinder head on the top using eight 2.5 by 12 uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. So uh, when we break it in part into parts, here's the main cylinder. Uh, it's basically a, a rounded cylinder, except there is one side which is flat for the um, for the valve chamber to connect against. Uh, it also has three holes on the sides, eight holes on the top, and then the one hole on the flat edge. So the cylinder head was um, not not too too bad part to make. Um, again, what I did with this one is I made half of the sectional drawing, revolved it, and then made just kind of, and kind of pocketed the uh, flat edge um, just so that way it was uh, just um, yeah it was it was flat. Um, There's that flat surface for the valve chamber to go up against. Um, the there was kind of a difficult thing with this one was that there was no set depth as to how far back the um, that uh, f that flat flattened part goes. So I kind of had to make an assumption off that, and based off the drawings and based off the other constraints, this is what looked right uh, to me. Um, this is the valve chamber. Uh, as said earlier, there's a flat surface where it connects with the the main uh, cylinder. Uh, it's, it also has a uh, an opening in the inside going up to a certain uh, height, but the given drawings never had a specific dimension on how how high that hole goes in the, the inside, so I had to elaborate on that. Um, there's also a, a hole on the flat side and a tube that sticks out on the other way. Uh, this is the exhausted port cover. It goes around the, the main cylinder where the three holes were uh, drilled. Uh, it basically contains the steam and lets it go through those tubes at the very end. Um, this was, I believe, was the hardest part that I made for this project. Um, the, the hardest part was having that uh, angle um, between the ends, which is 105 degrees, and also making it um, where it's like a, an empty shell-shaped um, figure instead of having it just a solid extrusion. So um, as stated before, there were other miscellaneous parts that just didn't, it wasn't appropriate to classify them in any subassembly. Um, so these kind of parts were just kind of the grab bag of parts um, that go between both the top cylinder head and the cylinder plate. So this is the piston. Um, it's connected to the um, these piston rod and uh, it moves inside the cylinder uh, vertically. Uh, it's a moving part. Uh, it moves with the um, the flywheel subassembly. And, uh, this is the valve rod. The valve rod was actually a two-part um, product. Uh, one just a simple cylinder with a hole in it, and then one um, head part where it just slides in uh, tightly into the rod. And then this is the piston rod that connects it to the piston. Um, it basically rotates with the flywheel and move, again moves vertically up and down through the cylinder. Uh, the valve spring was, um, w w at the time of making this, we hadn't really learned how to make it, but uh, once once it was known how to make it, it was quite simple. Um, all it was was really a circular profile um, and just revol just basically revolved around a an axis and a coil um, so that that part was pretty simple to make once you under once we understood it uh, but before that was kind of above <laughs> way over my head uh, the cylinder plate 
Uh, this part was very interesting to make, um, seemed almost e a little bit easy, a little bit challenging. Uh, one of the, one of the greatest, um, again, one of the greatest challenges I had with this was that there was no set distance as to how those circles in the center were right, arranged in, a, uh, in that uh, circular pattern. Um, that, th there was no distance but from the center, from the main center or anything like that. So again, I had to use assumptions based off of uh, what I saw. And again, this is what looked uh, like it was the best fit. So with all of those parts combined, we have the Husky engine. Um, this render shows pretty much the size of it. Uh, it's not that big. It is quite small. Uh, however, it does get what it, it does get the job done. Uh, throughout uh, the process of building this uh, steam engine, we did see some technical difficulties. And one that I saw was that the provided drawings didn't have um, the dimensions that we probably should have had. Uh, for those, as we said, we um, elaborated on those. Um, we, we sort of went with how it looked on the drawing and then made sure that during our assembly it actually works and it wouldn't cause any troubles when the parts were moving. And, and another technical difficulty that we found uh, was how to label countersink holes uh, in CATIA drafting. Um, we didn't really know how to do that, so we did forsake it. Um, but we do believe uh, that we labeled the holes to the proper to the proper dimensions, uh, both in depth and in and in uh, diameter. So, but other than that, uh, there is no indicator of it being countersunk other than the hidden lines and sectional views. Um, but with uh, that being said, uh, this is a Husky steam engine. Thank you. Thank you.